Today we're going to install our own AI. It's going to be able to talk to us and we can talk to it. The best part is we can train it on our own data so it can learn from us and it's specific to us. So it truly is your own AI. It's like your Jarvis. How cool is that? Jarvis, what's my Wi-Fi password? And it'll tell you. <laughs> it knows everything about you. If you tell it everything about you. The best part about all this, it's open source. You install it on your own computer and the data that you train it on never leaves your computer. You don't have to sell out to Microsoft or Google or open AI. No, it's all yours. It's free. It's a new paradigm, gentlemen, and it's truly private. Right, so the software that we're going to be using for this is called GPT for all. GPT is the, the type of chat body thing that you all know and love, and it's for all, it's for all of us. Basically, it's an AI ecosystem. Think of it as a collection of nice, useful tooling for you to work with your AI. We're going to get a nice interface that we can interact with our AI with, as well as a way to easily customize our AI using our documents and files. One of the good things about this is you don't actually need expensive hardware for it. It runs on pretty much everything with a processor, so your laptop will do. You don't need a super computer. Let's get to installing. So you go to that website here, uh, and then you just click the download button. It's that easy. Uh, if you're a Linux nerd like me, it says install for Ubuntu, but that's a lie. It's just install for Linux. I don't know why they put Ubuntu there. So download the file, save it somewhere, you know, find the executable that you downloaded, double click it and press next on the wizard and like check the boxes. Do I need to tell you this? You, you probably know how to do this, don't you? I hope you would know how to do it. It's actually that simple to install though. It's done now. Look, you've got this nice little desktop icon. What? 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 That was easy. Normally things aren't this easy. That's why this is good. If you watched my last video, you'll know about models and what models are. Models are basically a collection of parameters which are text and a description of the text like a, a you know a reddit comment reddit and a description of that reddit comment or whatever some training data a label if you will i'm going to download a model these are the list of models here there's a lot of models but you can just pick and choose your own they've got nice descriptions for you in the ui that you can choose okay pick whatever one you want honestly i don't really care like pick a small one if you've got a slow internet connection. I'm gonna download this small one with six billion parameters because I want it to be faster. Uh, six billion sounds like a lot, but in the uh, model world, it's it's not that much, but it works fine. Uh, well, that was really slow for me to download. So I ended up, I'm just gonna use one that I already use, all right? So now that we've downloaded our models and GPT for all, we can, uh, we can start talking to our AI that's running on our computer. So I've got a few test cases. I'm going to ask it a general knowledge question. I'm going to try and ask it some programming questions because they can generate code, which is one of the most useful parts of them. And I'm also going to see if it can be my friend, all right? Just can it be a general chatbot? So first of all, I just said hello. And then I asked it, who is the current monarch of the UK? This is a good test, right? And it said... Queen Elizabeth II. Now this is expected because these AIs are trained on data that's old. Most of the cutoff points is in, uh, you know, 2021 or what have you. But I asked this model, I asked it what day it was now. And it said it was in April of 2019. That's just a random date it plugged out of midair. But that shows that its data is old. Can't really use these for facts about living people, I guess. Now the interesting part. I asked it to write me a dice roller in Python, and here's what it generated. The code looked okay, but when I tested it, it didn't actually work. And then I told it that it didn't work for me, and then it said, sorry that it didn't work for you. It didn't auto-correct itself. Then I told it, can you fix it? And then it finally spat out code that kind of works sometimes. This Python code, by the way, is absolutely insane, and I would never write it like this. Um, there are models that are specifically trained for code, uh, this one is just a general purpose one. So you, you pick one with more parameters or specifically trained on like Stack Overflow answers if you wanted something like this. But anyway, now I asked it if it could be my friend. And then it, it was happy to be my friend. I asked it if it has a name. What can I call it? Uh, and I, I can call it anything, which is nice. Uh, and it's going to call me human. Mm, very good. Then I asked it if it could talk like a pirate for me. Not really sure why I did this. I thought it would be funny at the time, but looking back, it's kind of cringe and I'm not gonna do the voice, don't you worry. So I asked it to, you know, talk like a pirate with every question and it does, it did that all right. I said, my name is Barbosa after the, the after Barbosa, obviously. And then it now it starts to telling me about, um, now it responds in pirate speak and I asked, where can I find 
one of the nine pieces of eight. And then it, it, uh, it gave me a little treasure map to Blackbeard, the cursed pirate Blackbeard. Yeah, Edward Teach, good old, good old Teddy. So now I want to try a model designed for code and programming and see how that works. So this, this turned out interesting. I asked it, can it write me a dice roller in Python? And it goes, I'm sorry, I can't do that. And then he had no idea what I meant. Bro, bro, how can you not have any idea what I mean? A dice roller in Python is obvious if you're an AI trained on code, okay? It should be blaringly obvious, but it wasn't for this one. Anyway, I said bro, and he goes, how about me triple hash YouTube? Which really scared me because I'm recording a YouTube video, so maybe it knew too much about me right now. Uh, so I broed it again, obviously. Uh, oh, I said what? And then it says that it's human. Okay. Oh, hold up. No. This is too scary. And then I said it was a bad model because it started scaring me. It then said I should be better. Uh, I Then I got very scared and uninstalled it because uh, I, I thought about like, my PC was going to come alive and this thing was going to like... I hope Roko's Basilisk is not real. I've been thanking the AIs a lot of the time, but this one I just had to uninstall. I could not let it live. I had to kill it. So that's all well and good, okay? But... The most important and interesting thing that this can do is it can suck up your own documents and then train itself on them. So you can personalize it to yourself like we talked about before. Now, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I've got these documents here. There's some random assortment of things I made up basically. That says there's some F1 facts about championship winners that have not yet happened and definitely won't. Some random stats about yellow and the f and finally some information about the actual plugin, which is called Local Docs that we're using. Now the plugin we're going to be using is called Local Docs, and it's the, it's built into GPT for all. So to access it, you've got to click on that cog in the top right, browse the location of the documents you want to train. Mine are here. Then uh, name it and add them to your collection. So your documents have to all be under one folder. And they can be pretty much any kind of document, PDF, Word documents, tax files, minor all tax files, it's easier. But they can even do spreadsheets and stuff. So you now need to tell the AI you want to actually use these documents. So to do this, you click that little icon in the top right again and select your collection that you want to use. So I'm just going to select my docs. Uh, ignore the other one I was testing earlier. So let's see how this goes, shall we? Let's see if we can quiz the AI. So I asked it who won the F1 in 2024. Keep in mind, this is 2023. So obviously that won't have happened. And then it said, according to my records, Nicholas Latifi was the driver who won the F1 championship in 2024. And then it cites its source as well. Its source is results.txt. And you can click context button and then it will reveal where it found the document. So you know if it's hallucinating or not. These do hallucinate sometimes. It will give you incorrect answers, but you can always check if it is incorrect by clicking on the context because the context is where it get got its data from. So you can actually verify if it's being correct or if it's just spitting out nonsense, which they, they sometimes do. And then I asked it what the best song was, and then it said the, the most popular song in 2038, which is a significant date for other reasons, was Oh Yeah, The Moon uh, by Yellow. Um, I don't think it was, it's spelled yellow like that, is it? Yeah, I did spell yellow correctly, but it got that one a little bit wrong, but it's, it, it, it's trying its best. But anyway, then I asked it what local docs was, and then it sort of got it, kind of, it, not really. I think this, this is, this, so this is where I found that it gets confusing, right? Local docs is already a thing but it's not what we want it to answer for. So it's answering about a different different software. So you have to be more specific. So I said, what is the local docs plugin? And then it understood me, even though it gave me the wrong answer, okay? It said some complete nonsense because it was mixed up between the two of them, but it did cite sources. So it did try and train itself on our files, but it didn't work. Um, then I asked it, how do I install the plugin? And again, it said I need a license, which you don't because it's free. Um, and it got GPT for all right, so it knows it's GPT for all in the support email, but, you know, wrong domain, and also what's, it, so what's happened here is that it's gotten mixed up with the previous chats as well, so you've got to be specific when you ask it, okay? Then I asked it, who won the 2042 Drivers' Championship in F1? Uh, and it said Fernando Alonso, which I did write down because he will win the 2020, 2042 championship. So yeah, like I said, it can hallucinate, but you can always verify the context to make sure what it's saying makes sense with the documents that you trained it with. The more specific knowledge you use, the better. 
So I've tried with some personal documents and it works quite well. For example, you can ask it, when is my mum's birthday? And it will know that because it will know like who your mother is, right? Uh, because you've given it those documents. You could train it on work documents and ask it, what is the IP address of this really unique server, right? And it will tell you because it will know it knows specific. So it's very good if your data is specific. But there you go, everyone. There's a tutorial. As you can see, the technology is getting there. This didn't exist a few months ago, okay? And look where it is now. Just imagine where it will be at the end of this year. It's only going to get better, and this software is updated all the time. And you can update it in the client as well. So download it now and start now. Start using it. Start playing with it. It's only going to get better, okay? Goodbye.